All right, here's one more quick video this time on the empirical rule. The idea here is I'd be lying to you if I told you that you had to do empirical rule questions the way I taught you in the previous video. This is the ideal way to answer them. Ideally, you do them this way. It'll make your understanding better for later on in this class, blah, blah, blah. But there's another way. And if I didn't tell you this way, I feel like I'd be lying to you. The other way is just to memorize this picture. Or maybe I should say, memorize this picture and add. What am I talking about? Okay, so the empirical rule tells you that 68% of the area lies within one standard deviation of the mean. In other words, this shaded region is 68%. But as we saw, if 68% lies, if 68% of redwood trees are between 220 and 280 feet tall, we can deduce that half of them, 34%, are between 250 and 280. In other words, regardless of what we're talking about, the area between zero and one standard deviation above the mean is always gonna be 34%. And through symmetry, the area from negative one standard deviation to zero is also 34%. And you can do similar logic. You can be like between negative two and positive two is 95%. But if you take away this 68% that I already have accounted for in here, you're left with 27% total over here and over here. And so that means that over here you get 13.5% of it. And over here you get 13.5% of it. And you continue with this logic to figure out the area of each of these different little regions. This one ends up being 2.35%. And this one ends up being 0.15%. And because of symmetry, these have to be the exact same. These are also 2.35% and 0.15%. And if you can memorize this picture, you can answer any empirical rule question. It's not the best way to do it, but it'll work. What am I talking about? Remember this super hard question over here where I said, what percentage of nights do I sleep between five and 12 hours? And we had to deduce that it was this 47 and a half plus this 49.85. If I asked you that question over here, all you'd have to recognize is that five hours of sleep corresponds with this negative two and 12 and a half hours of sleep corresponds with this positive three. So your answer is just, how much area is there between here and here? How much area is shaded in up there? Well, 13 and a half plus 34 plus 34 plus 13 and a half plus 2.35. I go adding those all up. Sure, I'll write it all out. You know I'm annoyed already. You can tell I get annoyed when my handwriting gets worse and worse. Maybe I shouldn't do that, huh? You could add up this region, this region, this region, this region, and this region. Add those all together, and whatever you get for your answer is the answer to the question. Let's see, maybe I can cheat. No, I shouldn't cheat. Um, 34 and 34 is 68. 13 and a half and 30, 13 and a half is 27. 68 and 27 is 95. Oh, yeah, I knew that was going to be 95. Plus 2.35 gets you 97.35%. And nothing special about this problem. You could do that for any of these problems. Um, I don't know that this one was 16%. You remember that question? How many, what percentage of nights do I sleep more than nine and a half hours? More than nine and a half hours would be this guy, this guy, and this guy. Add up this number, this number, and this number. Add up 13.5 and 2.35 and 0 0.15. And if you add those all up, what you'll get is 16%. I don't know, I think that that specific one might've been easier to do this way. Um, but you don't have to do it this way. You don't have to deduce that, all right, if 68% shaded in the middle, then 32% is not shaded on the outsides. So half of that 32%, 16% over here. You don't have to do that. You can just go adding up numbers. You lose a little bit of the intuition, a little bit of the reason why we're doing this in the first place, but you always get the right answer. And I'm telling you that whether you do it this way or maybe the more preferred method, if you get the right answer and you could draw the picture, whether the picture looks like this or like this, you're getting full credit. So there's an optional way that you can answer these empirical rule questions if you'd like.